technical difficulties every single day. Y'all hear me? <laughs> well, you're on. Go ahead. You're on, but before you start, I'm glad you're up this way, Vic. Uh, this coming week, Brother Mark and Sister Vicky's going to have a 28-year anniversary. And uh, we want to recognize that. I, I guess somebody would have to go back here and twist your arm, make you come up here in the front, right? Okay. All right. We won't do that, but we're going to we're going to sing happy anniversary to him on the on the Facebook this morning. All right. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary and God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. I was there when it happened. <laughs> and and Mark told her she wouldn't last three years, and here he is, twenty eight. Uh -oh. Congratulations, y'all. We're so we're glad. All right, here's Brother Mark. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And uh, it is kind of fitting, I guess, uh, on my anniversary to be talking about marriage, I suppose. But uh, we're going to be looking at the seventh chapter of, of Corinthians this morning, 1 Corinthians. We're going to look at 12 through 20. Oh, excuse me, 10 through 20. I'm sorry, Brother Donnie, I told you wrong. 10 through 20 this morning. Um, uh, again, we're going to be talking about marriage. And, uh, you know, although it's maybe not your favorite subject, uh, you know, it definitely uh, a Christian needs to bear in mind uh, he is under commandment after he enters into this contract before God uh, to abide by that contract. And we have got to really put that into perspective as the divorce rate is some 51% among professing uh, Christians. Uh, the divorce rate is around 51%. We need to be serious, deadly serious, about entering into this kind of contract. And Paul lays that forth here in, in 1 Corinthians. But before we get started, uh, uh, I want y'all to pray with me this morning, and uh, uh, y'all can stand, okay? Heavenly Father, we just come before you today, and Lord, we just ask that you would open our minds and our hearts uh, to what you would have to say about marriage today. Lord, just, to, just let us uh, start to take to heart how serious uh, this marriage contract is. Uh, we realize that God instituted marriage. Uh, it is his design, and he gives Christians explicit instructions on how to be married and what constitutes a divorce. And we're going to be looking into those things greatly today, but Lord, we just pray that you would give uh, Christians ear to hear uh, the Word of God this morning. Again, we're going to be looking at chapter 7, 7 of 1 Corinthians, uh, beginning in, in verse 10. And unto the married I command ye, Yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord, if any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman with which hath an husband that believe not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage to such cases, but God hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called everyone, uh, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all churches. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called... Uh, in uncircumcision, let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, 
but the keeping of the commandments of God. Let every man in by, abide uh, in the same calling wherein he was called. Um, y'all can be seated. Again, as we look at Scripture here, in these first two verses, 10 and 11, Paul really caps it off uh, where it comes, so to speak, where it comes to the believer getting divorced. And, um, and he says, uh, And unto the married, I command ye, yet not I, but the Lord. Okay, Christian, it's time to listen. It's Jesus speaking. And you say, now, Brother Mark, now wait a minute. Well, let's look back here in the 19th chapter, uh, verses 6 through 9 of Matthew for just a second. Uh, y'all can turn there with me. I, I want you to see that you guys have the unspeakable privilege uh, this morning of hearing Jesus speak. And it is an unspeakable privilege that we'll rejoice in throughout eternity. But there in, in the 19th chapter, starting in verse 6 through verse 9, y'all read with me there, Wherefore? There are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put us under. What do you do with that, Christian? Again, verse 7, They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. Uh, and I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, shall, and shall marry another, committeth, the, committeth adultery, and whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. What does it say there? We're going to dwell here for just a second. What does it say there? Uh, we have hardness of heart, so we can't forgive. Uh, our hearts are hardened. Uh, the natural man has a hard heart. He does not have compassion. You want to see about a Christian. You tell me and you show me uh, the compassion that you have as a Christian. You've been forgiven your sins. You have been forgiven your many, many sins. But do you relay that compassion to another? Okay, and not just another, but your wife or your husband. Do you? The only reason it says here in 9... Uh, that, that you could be divorced. Uh, this is a very serious contract you've entered into. The only reason for divorce is what? Fornication. Committing adultery. Uh, fornication. We say, Brother Mark, my husband's a slob. I don't care. Neither does Jesus. We say, Brother Mark, my husband don't pick up his clothes out of the floor. I don't care. Neither does Jesus. Listen. Fornication is the only reason for divorce. Do I need to say it again, Christian? I'm talking to Christians today. I don't want to talk to unsaved people today. We're not talking to them. We're talking to believers this day. Fornication is the only reason um, that Jesus lists here. Now, Paul gave another one uh, that we read just a minute ago, and it was about abandonment, you know, when the unbeliever leaves uh, the Christian. The only other reason to break this contract is what? What's your vows say? Till death do us part. Okay, so it's fornication, death, and Paul says abandonment there in, in Corinthians. So, you know, I don't care if your wife combs her hair every day. Uh, you know, neither does Jesus. What he cares about is you guys honoring the commitment you made before God, you two honoring that commitment. You know, we don't a lot of times think uh, when we're going to divorce court, the only person that's going to win in a divorce is who? The attorney. They're the people that are going to profit from, your, from the demise of your relationship. You know, it, it's not greener on the other side of the, the fence, Denny. It, it's not. Lots of times you and I, when our marriage is failing, Brother Donnie, when our marriage is failing, and we enter into a new relationship, we find the same problems. What does that mean? I probably brought those problems with me, right? Junk stored in your trunk, you know, that stuff you carry with you, the uh, doubtfulness and all those things. You know, and, and in Scripture, marriages are called to be what? 
We're called to be peaceful. If you fight like cats and dogs every single day, there's a problem going on. I mean, I know certain relationships work that way, but I'm telling you what, you're supposed to have peace in your life. Okay, and you cannot have peace in the middle of chaos. It will not work. Uh, so what am I saying here? The only reason. Okay, and the point of the matter is what Jesus said. The only reason here is fornication. And we've got to get that right. Um, I wonder if we would cut the divorce rate uh, among Christians by 30% if we did what Jesus told us to do. Okay, you're called to do that. This is Jesus' order. Uh, he's the Lord of your life. You can't just have fire insurance. You've got to have a Lord there. Uh, he's just not going to keep you from the fire. You've got to, we profess Him as our Lord and what? Savior, right? I'm going to tell you right now, this is a commandment to Christians. A commandment. And you guys are taking it way too lightly. If I'm stepping on your toes today, tell it to Jesus when you get there. But your marriage is to be saved. Uh, you're supposed to give it every opportunity to work. And, and look, I know how the mind thinks. Well, I'm just going to make Brother Donnie miserable till he dumps me. No, really. It's intended when he said uh, that the only reason uh, that we could put a husband or a wife away was for fornication. No, that's not what he meant. And, and that's not what you're to do. You're to live how? Among all men? Peaceably. Come on, folks. You know, if I'm dwelling a little bit here on the divorce, our rates are very, very close, if not ahead, of the natural man out in the world that doesn't believe in God. Really? God commands you that if you enter into a marriage agreement, that you're to be there until, what, fornication happens and you've got such a hard heart you can't even forgive that. Although it's been forgiven you several times, I assure you. We say, Brother Mark, what are you talking about? God views idols the same as he does adultery. Anything or anyone that you put in the place of God is an idol. Uh, so you tell me you have not committed forn fornication? Really? Not in his sight. Maybe not to your partner, but... At any rate, we need to understand. Uh, we forgive it. Uh, we want forgiveness, but we can't forgive it. Come on, how hard is your heart? You say, Brother Mark, now you know my husband. Oh my, that guy, I can barely get him out of, work, out of the house to go to work. Okay, does that fall into the category of fornication? <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. You know, I believe everybody ought to get up and go to work, folks. And I might be in the minority. I believe Scripture supports that. I think it says if you won't work, you won't eat. But um, I'm pretty sure about that, by the way. Uh, but uh, is it grounds for divorce? That's what we're talking about here. No. So if I leave my socks laying in the middle of the floor, I'm not, I think he doesn't have a right to go get a divorce. In God's opinion. Okay, and I don't care what the state says. I truly don't. It is, we're not talking about the state here. And you read uh, the newspaper, Brother Donnie, it says, irreconcilable differences. Wow. That's the grounds for divorce, right? Is that what it says? Irreconcilable. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What does it say? Fornication. Is that an irreconcilable differences? I don't know what they lob in there. But that's not in my Bible. It says, Jesus says nowhere in here are irreconcilable differences. Work your problems out, folks. Uh, fornication and fornication only. Uh, and again, Paul elaborated a little bit uh, about, and he said, I, not the Lord, uh, about abandonment. You know, if someone will not stay with you, you can't, you can't handcuff them to the door, okay? If they just will not, then... You know, you've got to grant that person a, a divorce, but fornication and death are really the, are really the crux of the matter. Uh, when you enter into marriage, and I tell people that are going to get married, this is a married, this is a lifelong commitment. It is not, uh, you know, it is not easy. It is not easy being married. I don't care who you are. It's not like breathing. You've got to consider someone else's feelings and that's sometimes hard to do. And you've got to realize that they have faults. 
uh, that's sometimes even more hard to do, right? And that, you know, that you're going to be married to them. You're going to be one flesh. You have got to embrace that. If it's not fornication, folks, you can't, in God's eye, get a divorce. And again, I think a person ought to be able to figure out how, if someone's sorry, you know, what's, what's necessary for forgiveness? Someone's first got to be sorry for what they did. But uh, here we see, and am I telling people it's okay to have an adulterous relationship? No, I'm not. Don't get confused. It's a sin, and you shouldn't be entering into it at all. Uh, you, you're under contract to be married to that person until when? Death does you part. Catching fire up here, but death does you part. You're not, it's not okay to have any kind of an adulterous relationship. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is we have such hard hearts that we can ask for forgiveness for something and we won't forgive it for someone else. So, um, but the grounds for divorce are simple and that, and that is uh, fornication and adulterous affair is what we're talking about there. And um, I want you to understand that if you uh, decide to get a divorce, it's not, it's not okay to go get married until your, until your husband dies. Scripture's in 12 there. I mean 11. But, and if she depart, let uh, her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband be uh, put away as wife. Look, it's not okay. He's just... Uh, uh, trade your husband in on a new model. Okay, it's not okay. That's not what God intends. Uh, if you make that contract, you enter into that contract, He intends for you to see it through to the very end. Uh, you know, um, marriage is, is a very important uh, symbol uh, as we are the bride of Christ. Um, uh, we wouldn't feel very good if you we went out and got a new church, would we? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, you know, uh, he said, well, Brother Mark, I know you believed in me, but, uh, you know, I found a new model that believes better than you. Well, you know, God's not like that. Jesus is not like that. Uh, he's, he sticks closer than a brother, closer than a brother. Uh, he has promised to never leave or forsake us. And, um, and we've got to be of the same mind when we enter into a marriage uh, contract. Now, things happen. I understand that. People are weak. Uh, Sometimes they give in to temptations. Uh, sometimes they enter into extramarital affairs. And, and sometimes the marriage cannot be saved. In those times uh, where a person is not willing to admit uh, that they're wrong, that they have entered into an extramarital, and that it is wrong, an extramarital affair, uh, then in those times divorces are necessary. Um, but only in those times. Uh, again, your little, uh, your little pet peeves about your spouse, uh, Jesus doesn't care about them and really neither do I. They don't fall under the category of fornication. Maybe you should have done a little bit more research before you said I do. Research is always good, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe you should have consulted God before you said I do. And that's probably the point of the matter here. Uh, we should definitely be consulting our Lord and Savior before we get married. But uh, I'll probably dwell here about as long as I need to. And you get the point, I'm sure. Fornication is the only reason for divorce. If you're involved in an extramarital affair, uh, I promise you today, you should come clean with your wife. And you should stop it. Uh, Paul said what? Flee fornication. Flee it. You're to run from it. If that girl... Uh, knows you're married and you're having an affair with her, she's not okay. Or that guy. She's not okay. Uh, she's not the person you should, you should be with. Um, but to the rest, speak I not, speak I not the Lord, if any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased with to dwell with her, let her not uh, leave him. So what was going on in the first Corinthian church? Well, in the first Corinthian church, uh, the wife might accept Christ, right? Okay, brand new. Uh, brand new. There was all kinds of believers there in the building. Okay, uh, brand new Christians. Brand new. Okay, and the wife says, no, I believe in Jesus. 
I believe uh, he is the way and the truth and the life. I believe he died for my sins. I believe he paid for my sins on the cross. And I believe God shows his acceptance for that payment by raising him on the third day. I believe that. But husband's still going up to where? He's going up to see the thousand prostitutes up on the hill living like he's always lived. But he's still staying with the wife. Well, he's committing fornication. She's got legal grounds for divorce, right? Right? He's committing fornication. Uh, that's the way they lived before, though. But, and if she says, look, that's not okay with me anymore. Uh, you can't go up on the hill anymore. Uh, you're to live with me and only me. And if he does that, she's not to divorce the guy, okay, or the girl. She's not to divorce him. All right, we're to live with them in hopes of what? Winning them to who? Okay, there's an internal plan going on here. Uh, we're, it, we're talking about eternal things, not so much as temporal things uh, just in the moment. But we're to live uh, and out our faith before that lost person. And I know people, uh, I know there's one sitting here uh, this day that want her husband to Christ. I know people that have done that. That's awesome. And uh, well, she didn't tell me that, he did. Uh, but... Um, but uh, it's awesome. What a testament, you know, that a marriage led to what? Eternal life. Uh, what, a, what a testament that is. Um, for, um, okay, uh, uh, but if the unbelieving uh, depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage to such uh, cases. So the guy won't quit going to the place where the prostitutes dwell up on the hill. A thousand of them up there. Uh, listen, Corinth was a bad, evil, wicked place. Uh, so there was a lot of these people there, and that was their lifestyle. So uh, when Christianity come in and Paul preached the gospel, what happened? Changes. Uh, God moved like he always does. Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't hear the gospel presented and do nothing about it. It's not a possibility. You're either going to accept it and apply it to your life, or you're going to reject it. Uh, and that's what happened there in Corinth when he preached the gospel. God moved. Uh, God saved people. Some of the husbands didn't get saved. Some of the wives didn't get saved. But, um, but there was a moving of the Spirit there when Paul preached. But the unbelieving, uh, if they depart, uh, again, you're to um, go ahead and, and uh, you can't make them stay. So you have to do whatever you have to do. And here, uh, abandonment falls in because they've left. Um, so you've got to let them out of the contract. There in 16, For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband, or knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? You don't know. You don't know if God has chose you to be the messenger uh, that's going to lead that person uh, into becoming a Christian. Uh, oh my. Uh, if you think about that for one second, think about what, what is in the balance. Okay, if you weren't there and you weren't married to that person, I don't, I don't perceive to know how bad off they are, but if you weren't, what might happen? They could depart, get killed, and go to hell, right? So, you know, the responsibility there for the believer is huge, like it always is. Our responsibility is huge. What did Paul say? I would that no man's blood be on my hands. In other words, he's going to tell you about the gospel. Uh, every Christian needs to live that way. And not just the uh, preacher boy standing before you proclaiming the gospel. Your life needs to be a reflection of that every single day. And even your marriage, if you're married to an unbeliever. And I'll tell you right now... Uh, I wouldn't advise anyone to marry someone that doesn't believe. It would be a death sentence. You'd be dragging a dead body everywhere you go. Uh, but if you're in that relationship and you've accepted Christ, then, then you know, you've got to do everything you can uh, to see that that person gets saved. Uh, but we need to understand, at the beginning, uh, God wouldn't, you, wouldn't have you marry a dead person. He just wouldn't do that. So uh, we need to think clearly and hardly, hard about that and pray clear and hard daily until we get the answer and the peace that, uh, that comes with only knowing Christ. 
Um, but as God hath distributed to every man, uh, as the Lord hath called everyone, so let him walk, and so I ordain, uh, so ordain I in all churches. Look, uh, Paul's giving guidelines. He's not giving specifics here. Uh, Jesus laid out the specifics. Uh, it was for fornication and, again, flee fornication. Uh, any kind, anytime someone is cheating, it's a problem. Um, anytime there's an adulterous affair, there is a huge problem. And especially if that person is not uh, sorry about what they're doing. So, but Paul is laying an ordinance here on the church. Um, and so if you're a preacher and you're telling someone uh, that, or a... Uh, Someone giving advice, uh, maybe uh, I know uh, certain churches have, uh, you know, counseling uh, where they counsel. That, that if you're giving advice to divorce someone and it's not for fornication. Uh, and let me add one more thing there uh, before we go forward here. Uh, I'm not telling you to stay in an abusive relationship. If somebody's beating you to death, uh, you can legally separate. But, it, but as hard as it is for me to say this to you... Uh, it's not grounds for divorce. Uh, but you're not to stay in that kind of relationship. Where's peace in that relationship? You're to leave it. Uh, you're to get counseling if the guy or woman is, is able to, give, to get counseling uh, and is willing to go. But you're not to stay in that. Uh, it's not a peaceful relationship. Uh, but again, it's not fornication, is it? Hard saying, I know. Uh, but you're not to stay in it. Uh, you're not to stay around it. Uh, you're to leave it. Uh, so if someone is abusive and they're hitting you uh, or abusing you, there's many, many good places that you can go to be safe or they're abusing your children. Uh, I'm telling you, you're not to be in that kind of a relationship. Uh, you're to legally separate. Uh, and if restraining orders are necessary to keep people like this away from you, then until they come around to their uh, senses, then you need to make sure that, that you're safe. Uh, I wouldn't advocate you and I'm sure Jesus wouldn't want you in that kind of a relationship that kind of an abusive relationship uh, you're made in his image uh, you're, not, you're not to be a doormat you're a believer you're not a doormat uh, so if someone's beating on you uh, you're to uh, be somewhere safe and peaceful is any man called uh, being circumcised let him not become uncircumcised is any called uncircumcised let him not be uh, not be circumcised. Look, uh, what they were doing is, again, they were trying to be like the Jews. You know, they were running out as soon as they accepted Christ and getting circumcised. You know, that was a sign. It was an Old Testament sign, and it was just for uh, that period. Uh, that ended when Christ came, uh, came on the earth and paid for your sins and mine that circumcision ended uh, we don't need an outward symbol uh, our symbol is in our heart it is not in an outward symbol again 19 circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandments of God in other words he wants you to do what he says and not just outwardly uh, not, not on the outside uh, like being circumcised. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. You know, um, I know a lot of people when they get saved, uh, they want to change things in their lives, and a lot of things in their lives need to be changed. Brother, if you're dealing, uh, if you're dealing blackjack and drinking on your job and serving alcohol to people, causing them to stumble, then you know you need to change your job probably. Uh, again, that's between you and, and the good Lord, but I would, I would venture to say that he probably doesn't want you uh, helping people to sin. If you're a, a pimp, uh, he definitely does not want you in that job. Uh, there's lots of jobs that are, not, uh, that, that are not for the believer. Those jobs uh, we should not enter into. Number one, being a pimp is illegal. And number two, you're, you're advocating fornication and that's going to be a problem. You can't be a Christian and do that. Uh, you're, not, uh, you're not obeying and keeping the commandments of God. Uh, if you're facilitating sin, that's bad. 
Uh, you know, and you can look at me and say, oh, Brother Mark, uh, Jesus said he'll cover all my sins. Well, are you hugging it and holding on to it? What is, who is your God? The sin you're in? Uh, no. Uh, we're to abstain from sin. Uh, we're to not give it a place in our life. And we are definitely to keep the commandment of God. Uh, as a matter of fact, you should be broken about any sin you're in. You definitely shouldn't have a job that, can, that allows you to continue in it. So, but those things are, uh, are things that the believer, after he comes to know Christ, needs to sort through with much, much prayer and counseling. Uh, you know, and uh, if you've got questions about marriages, uh, uh, feel free to send them to us at First Baptist. We'll do our best to help you with that if you're on the Internet community. Uh, we would want to lend a helping hand to troubled marriages uh, any time we can. I, I got a great group of people around me will get the right answers to you and we'll make sure that they are biblical uh, and again the Bible is the authority on a marriage uh, it's not what I think it's not the law of the land uh, the law of the land says uh, mother that you can uh, be divorced from your husband uh, if you don't agree with him irreconcilable differences you just don't agree with the shirt he's wearing today that's not what the scripture says that's not what Jesus says uh, Jesus says fornication uh, is the reason for a divorce. Anything else is not the reason. And again, I want to caution you. Uh, and I know this is a, a scripture and I'm talking about people that aren't getting beat up in their relationship. Uh, you're never to be beat on. Uh, you guys are uh, two people that have become one flesh. Uh, why would I knock my own eye out? Why would I do that? So uh, when violence is involved, uh, you need to legally separate and take whatever steps is necessary to make sure that you are safe. Uh, Jesus would want nothing less for you than that, I'm sure. Um, and we would never advocate violence. But uh, anything else, um, I'm sorry. Uh, you entered into the contract. Uh, it is your responsibility. You entered into it before God. Uh, willingly, as long as you weren't forced to say uh, your vows, I'm sure you weren't. Uh, we need to understand that uh, we are to uh, honor those vows, honor the, the contract that you made before God. It's important. Um, God instituted it. He did it for a reason. He saw that man was not good to be alone. Uh, there was a reason for marriages. Um, and again here, uh, Paul tells us, uh, he told us last week that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, it's not great to be married. Uh, those people need to stay single. Uh, but, uh, before you get married, before you uh, take those vows, I know I'm running out of time and I'm kind of beating on you a little bit. Before you do that, consult God. Uh, don't look at him after your marriage is blown up in your face and the guy's running around with two or three girls or the girl's running around with two or three guys saying, God, what am I going to do now? Well, you should have consulted with God in the beginning to start with. We should have had a talk with him and said, Lord, let me know if I'm doing the right thing. Uh, show me, uh, show me what, what you need to show me and it needs to be your will and not mine. Uh, so we, we've got to get that right. And, and, uh, and you know, marriage is a great, uh, is a great institution. Uh, you know, we might have made it look a little rough here today about all the fornication and the cheating, but there's some good people uh, that are married. I know Miss Jewel was married to Brother Robert for about 70 years. That's right, isn't it? Uh, I'm telling you right now, uh, there's uh, what a testament, you know, and it's uh, and I've been lucky and blessed to be with Victoria for about 28 years. So you know these things are uh, just awesome when it works right and when everybody knows uh, what God expects of them and they do it, you know, and that and that Christ is the center of that relationship, not me or not Vicky or not you or your spouse, but Christ is the center of the relationship. Uh, then it then it works like God intended for it to do. Um, Y'all stand with me. We're going to be dismissed in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your instruction on marriage. Lord, we pray that we all take it to heart, apply it to our lives, Lord. And, and just, uh, Lord, if we could just love the marriage uh, as you intended for us to love it and remember to keep Christ the center of that relationship. Lord, we just pray a, a blessing upon the marriages that are struggling uh, that were in the sound of our voice. Lord, we pray that they would just repent. 
Lord, we pray that both parties would submit to your lordship. Oh, Lord, and they would just continue uh, in following you. And Lord, just being uh, what you would have for them to be. Lord, we pray that we would uh, see everyone home safely. Uh, and back here at the next appointed hour, these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.